everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town, show 396. Karen will be back next week with Selectman John Mahoney. On January 20th, Karen will interview Selectman Chair Ken DeVaris. That's just two of what's coming up in the weeks ahead. Karen has some great shows lined up. Uh, let's pay some respect to the show's underwriters. We've got David and Kevin Gallerani, owners of Cape Auto Body and Service, located on Samoset and Sandwich Street, right here in Plymouth. Service quality is superb. One Stop Painting, Jeff Cohen. Hi, Jeff. Great service, great people. Also, tune into Wrestling with Computers right here on Pack TV. My f my favorite computer company. <laughs> they came and fixed my computer and made my w life a lot easier. <laughs> Your wife a lot <laughs> easier. My <laughs> wife too is yep. And thank you very much, Brustic PC Solutions for fixing my computer. That's great. <laughs> um, I'd like to say hello to everybody, and uh, I'm here, so we must have the three amigos, and uh, we've got Steve Lydon. Randy Parker and me, Wrestling Brewster, here to talk about whatever we want to talk about. And please call in, because if you call in, then you can make it interesting. So, Steve, what do you want to talk about tonight? I would like to talk about the full-time kindergarten that was approved by the Board of Selectmen last night at the Selectmen's meeting. I support full-time kindergarten. It does make a difference in the education of a, ch a, y a young child. They learn more. Their social skills are better. But the problem I have with this, it's going to add around $300 to our taxes. And per household. Per household. Yeah. Average. On the average tax. It's, I was told $0.10 cents for every $1,000 valuation. Um, if this is such, if the school committee thinks this is such a high priority, then yes, they should do it. But, you know, our taxes are getting to be out of sight. We can't keep on, we can't sustain the, mon the amount of spending that we have been doing in the past. So I feel that, and I asked them this question last night. I asked that the selectmen's meeting was a joint meeting between the school committee, the finance committee, and the board of selectmen, that I wish they would you know, prioritize and put, if this is high, then fine, do it, but get rid of some of the lower priorities to help pay for this. Um, of course, they don't answer you, and that will be discussed with the... They don't have to. They don't have to, and that's fine. I mean, it's, it's, you know, public comment, and I made my comment. A lot of other people did, were for it. There was a couple of people against it, but mostly people were for it. Uh, it, is, it is a good program, but it's expensive, and like I say, we can't keep off sustaining the amount of you know spending that we have, especially with the nuclear plant closing. Yeah. And we don't know what the impact of that is going to be on the town. Um, the new school. We have you know, and town the, citi hall. the citizens of Plymouth have been very good to the pip the schools. We have voted for two overrides. And I think now it's time that maybe the schools should think about the, the citizens and try to eliminate some programs that are not necessary to help pay, you know, to, to help with the tax rate. I mean, we're down a thousand students, from nine to eight thousand. Um, they have they they've made deals with the um, solar farms to you know reduce their electric bill quite a lot. So, you know, I think maybe it's time to give back to the taxpayers. That's and that's it's the not one. it's not just the senior citizens that are hurting, but it's it's people who are work the working people are hurting. You know, we have moms working, dads working, you know, and three hundred bucks is that's a lot of money. That is a lot. You know, money. that's a lot of money. Not counting, you know, the other increases that were going to be on the tax bill. So I feel that, you know, I support it, but on the other hand is I worry about who's going to pay for it. We are. Well, that's, that's right. And, We're going to pay for it. The, the school budget is the one thing we can't touch. $90 million is the yep. school budget this year. Yep. Uh, once the school, school budget is approved, which it was last night, the selectmen have no authority over the school budget. Right. They, it's all enough. It, it, that's it. You know, last night was the time to vote against, you know, line items to reduce their budget. But we never do. We never vote, but vote against But once they get it. the money, it's theirs. They don't have to answer to the town how they spend it, where they spend it, how much they spend, or how much they didn't spend. That's all up to, uh, you know, we 
Citizens we can question can't touch it. it. We, we can, can question, question it, but we have no authority. Meeting, but we can't question. We can't really touch line items. I yeah, think we can. We can. We can re, no, we can we reduce can. it. We can reduce it. We can reduce it by a hundred thousand dollars, but we can't dictate to the school committee what the, or, or, or where they're going to take the hundred thousand right, dollars from. Right. Yeah. Right. But we can. We, we can vote against line items have on their ever, budget. Have we ever? Then once we vote against it. Then, you know, we reduce that money from their budget, and that's what they get, and that's their money. No, we, I don't remember any time voting against <clears throat> not approving their it? budget. Nor I, and I've been there yeah. since 87. Uh, you know, I haven't been there that long, but it seems like, you know, right. we, we want the best for our kids. And I, but now it's to a point that, you know, we need to do something to uh, stop this r rampant spending that we do. And it's not only the school side, it's the town side, too. Right. You know, it's the town side, too. It's both. So so being two members of the, um, the uh, town meeting, how do, we, how do we stop that rampant spending? How do, how do we... I think that someone would have to make an amendment to the, uh, you know, to the moderator. And it will be put to a vote. That would be taken out. Yeah. And then I it would be voted on at town meeting. Yeah. And, and being a past town meeting member, f for lack of a better term, there's not a lot of people with the balls to do that. Yeah. And that, that's, right. what, that's what I've always had a, a problem with town meeting is, is, you know, when we're talking about what was the budget, 90 mil? 90 million. 90 million dollars. Town meeting can conceive a twenty thousand dollar pickup truck, but they can't conceive that ninety million dollars. So it, it's easier to it's easier to argue about the twenty thousand dollar pickup truck. It is, but you know when you listen to them, Ken, you want to say something because you've been. I just want to add a penny here. Uh, there was one time I was sitting in the first row at North High School, and thirty five thousand dollars was removed from the school budget. You can remove dollar amounts, but you cannot remove line items. Right. Okay. Right. And that thirty-five thousand dollars was a recommendation made by Dale Weber out of Precinct Three uh, that he could not see why town meeting uh, needed to authorize the purchase of a uh, Ford Crown Victoria for the school department. Right. Okay. Thirty-five thousand. Yeah. And I remember that was removed, but. That's all I get to say. Uh, not, not a rake. Yeah. What's that? You know, and the other thing, I was listening last night to the explanations. I was horrified. Do you know, I didn't know that if a parent wanted their child to go to full-time kindergarten in Carver, or Bourne, or Kingston, and there was room and the town would take them, then we would have to pay for it. Really? Okay. The town of Plymouth would have to pay Plymouth students to go to someplace else for full-time kindergarten. Yeah. There was also this other state mandate. I forget the name of it, but it was it was big bucks, and it's for homeless kids. So I think if someone's going, if some kid is going to school in Plymouth, it becomes homeless and then goes to Middleborough. We have to bring them back. To Plymouth yep. to go to school, transport him back to go to school in Plymouth, and then back to Middleborough at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, I just Our you know, tax dollars at work. It's well, you know, it's not Plymouth; it's <coughs> mandated by the state. Right. And I think you know. Uh, Our tax dollars at work. That tax dollars at work, but I think um, you know maybe we should start calling up you know you know our our reps. Vinny and Matt and Calder and say, yeah, this is crazy. That is crazy. You know, some of this, you know, these mandates, state, you know, these state mandates, unfunded, are ridiculous. They are ridiculous. If you have any comments on any of this, please call 508-830-3971. We'd love to hear what you think about what we're talking about. Um, I, I think I think wrestling on your uh, question of how do we control this yep. at town meeting. Um, I, I'm not quite sure that in the liberal state of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the liberal town uh, of Plymouth within the Commonwealth that there's any way 
to control that spending um, other than through a philosophical adjustment. If, if you go into administration at, at, at town hall and if you make an observation that our taxes are way too high, they've quadrupled in 10 years right. or whatever they've done, uh, they'll pull out a list and they'll tell you that Plymouth is right in the middle of all of the other towns around us and just where we should be and these people are a little underpaid and yep. you know nobody's getting too much and we're working on benefits. Uh, we hear it all the time and uh, um, we're not Texas. You know, yep. we're not South Carolina. Uh, we live in New England. Uh, and I think that there is a larger degree of liberalism and, and socialism in this corner of the country. And I think it has a lot to do with the caliber of the people that uh, live here and, and, and come out of here. Yeah. It's good. You know, I don't mind the taxes uh, so much. Um, I like the really nice schools and a really good educational system. Steve brings up some interesting points, reminds me of when we couldn't offer vocational programs. So we'd pay to send the voc students right. to some other location. Yep. So, you know, the kindergarten thing, I guess, just has to work itself out, but. Uh, but it, it is, I, I see your point. The, 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 the inherent problem is that we keep saying for the children, for the education, higher education, We've got to do this for the, for the education so that we produce an educated child when he leaves the system. But you, you have to look at the economics of it, that yes, we need to produce this, but how we do it and how we pay for it really needs to be looked at and, and really needs to be, you know, you, you you're always saying, all right, we need this, this, and this, so we've got to get some more money. We're not saying, well, we need this, this, and this. Where can we look and say... Where can we save? Where can we save? Right, right. Yeah. What can and we cut out? What can we cut out? And, and whenever you look at a budget, and many years back, my wife was looking at the budget, so... I, she still does. She st no, she doesn't. <laughs> but... It was always when she said, what can we cut? It was always stuff that there's no way you could cut. When you looked at the fire department, the fire department says, well, we could cut the new Jaws of Life, but that'll cause mm. 50 people next year to not be saved. And, and you can always cut this. And, and it, it's, it is a problem because you can't always say, well, we'll just raise, raise the budget. And you get you gotta find some equilibrium. Otherwise, you just keep raising the budget, and then twelve years down the road, you're you know a thousand dollars more in your taxes. Well, and I, I think worse than that, uh, if you think generations ahead, the load that is being created is going to those well-educated children. Right. Exactly. And uh, there may be no education sufficient to cover the load created. Right. So. Right. At some point, we get to pay the piper. Right. You know, I mean, I think we all want good education for our kids. You know, we, we all want that. It's just that I think now that the price of it is way more than it should be. Well, when does you kindergarten know? start? At what age? September. Five, what is it, five? <laughs> five and full time? Is that the deal? Yeah, yeah. they're going yeah. full time. They have half day now. I'm out of that loop now. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. My youngest yeah. is 26. Mine, mine's 34, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, a, lot of, a lot of parents want it hmm. um, because it's it's you know you drop them off in the morning and pick them up in the afternoon instead of having to go back to school at noon and pick them up. Yeah, they can get a third job that way. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they could, and you know, some people, <coughs> you know, was, some people were saying, you know, that they don't want it, they don't want this because they don't want to pay for babysitters. Right. Uh, I, I don't think that way. I don't. I, I do think teachers are babysitters. I send my kids to them. They take care of my kids. Yep. That's my baby. You take care of them. You educate them. You take care of them. You teach them. You, yep. you know. So it's you know. But I think it was taken the wrong way. 
Yeah. You know, they were insulted. That's all they do is, you know, that's all they do is babysit, and it's not. Well, yeah. My you brother know. was a, a teacher at the charter school, and he, he said, we have your kids for eight hours a day. Right. You've got them for four hours in the morning and four hours at night. Right, you know, and I think that's a great, you know, a, a great thing to say about a teacher, that they, they're, they're babysitters. They're yeah. educators and babies because they, yeah. they're taking care of our kids, right. and we trust them to take care of our kids. Right. So I think that was taken kind of out of context and it was the wrong way, but yeah, you know. But uh, oh, we we have a speaker. Could I please interrupt again? Yes. I just received a text message from a viewer, and what the text message says is that I didn't watch the whole meeting last night, so I'm going to beg off. But according to the the uh, text, it says to fund the school. The selectmen say they are cutting fire and police budget, and fire and police are needed by everyone in the town. So that's not the real place to be cutting the police fire. I was at the meeting last night, and when the police uh, chief, Mike Pateri, and Chief Bradley get up before the uh, selectmen to discuss their budgets, they, I think the chief, the police chief wanted eight patrolmen and one sergeant and the uh, fire department wanted a IT tech, a mechanic and I forget how many firemen, the actual actual firemen, it could have been three, it could have been four uh, John Mahoney you know, was one of the selectmen who offered a to to cut the number of firemen, uh, the policemen till four, and really? the and he uh, also the um, the fire chief was cut, and they it was a two two uh, it was a tie vote, you know two to two, and uh, Sean Page selectman does not vote on anything to do with the firemen. He you know he, he accuses himself, which is good. good. Uh, so a lot of votes. So they're coming back. The next meeting, the next selectman's meeting, to readdress the fire budget and the pol and the police budget. Also, there was one something cut out of the DPW. Uh, no, there was something about seventy thousand dollars to clean bathrooms. And uh, <laughs> uh, hey, I didn't make this up, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, so that is coming back because they were questioning the figures. Um, and I think they took out the out of the DPW. They took out the supervisor that was going to be the uh, be supervising the, the I guess the maintenance people who cleaned the buildings. The uh, custodian. At this point, Steve, doesn't this whole thing have to go to town meeting to be approved? Yes. Right. The, the, the uh, garden, the all that goes be cuts. everything goes the before the town meeting. Cuts, so this should be an interesting town meeting this April because sitting right beside you is somebody who's faced with some cuts uh, at April town meeting also as far as um, the little house of man of men. So. Yeah, no, it's everything, this is just a, the selectmen's recommendations that they recommend to town meeting. It still has to go to FinCom and then to town meeting. And this year, taxes with the $300 for the schools, and I wasn't going to bring this up till later, but right now, we have spent a million dollars on the sore blow-up that we had. Uh, they have no idea what's, you know, what it's going to finally cost. They have no idea if there's any damage to the pipes. They have they found some pipes that were low where they've sunken, and that's got to be fixed. They don't know how they're going to fix it. Are they going to bypass it? Or, you know, so... Right now, we're just, you know, that's another million bucks that we don't have. I talked to the director last night, and he's not sure if the state will give us any reimbursement, you know, for our grants to help pay for this. So we're, well, we're, looking, we're looking at a hell of a lot, you know, you know, expense when it comes to the sewer. Where's the sewer? Where's the sewage going? Right now, it's being... The pipe that is broken, they have they bypassed that and it's going into the the plant. Good. When it happened, well, as long as it's not going back to the ocean. No, when it mm. happened, I guess they I guess there's a collection point down on the waterfront, and yeah. they had they hired all these septic companies to come in with their trucks and they would pump it 
from Water Street into the trucks, and the trucks are delivered directly to the uh, treatment. the treatment plant. Wow! But you know, and a, <laughs> yeah, but it could have been worse. There was no damage. There was no wetlands. There was no, you know, according to JB last night, there was no no there was, spillage. No, well, there was spillage, but it didn't get into the wetlands. It didn't get into the aquifer. Good. It didn't affect any wells, people's wells. Um, you know, the, everyone was there. The you know, the the state was there all the time. The, he was there. David Gould was there on site. Yep. There was a lot of people on site working twenty four hours a day. You know, and so I guess they did the best they could. You know, but right now they don't have any solutions. They don't know what they're going to do. Yep. How much it's going to cost? So that's another expense we're going to have to look at. So when we start talking about full time kindergarten and you know eight police officers and. You know, uh, what do we need and what, what can, yeah, we, I mean, what you can know. we actually do? Yeah. Is there any contingency built into our annual budget for this sort of thing, whether it's a sewer line or the boiler blowing up in town hall today? Um, or is that something that we have to pull out of fund, out of a fund, out of and the then come fund. the spring town meeting? You mean free cash? Re reimburse yeah. it. I've heard free of free cash. cash. Free cash. <laughs> yeah, free cash. I don't know how much money's in free cash. Uh, you know. free cash. Yeah, free. You know. Wow, Kenny's giving us a buck. Nah. <laughs> but free, you know, it won't help. But free but. cash kind of got us in trouble with the with the arbitrator. Imagine that. Because the arbitrator said when he was arbitrating the contracts. Boy, you got a triple A, you know, bond rating. You got free cash. You can afford to pay it. Pay him more. Yep. You know. So. <laughs> but when when you talk about budget cuts, Steve, you're not talking about making any department smaller or making any equipment disappear. This is the new fiscal year this budget. This is the new fiscal right. year budget. And, so and add on. So we wouldn't get eight officers. We wouldn't get more firemen. We is, is what you're saying in, in in order to to fund the kindergarten. No, they, it's. The kindergarten's been approved. That's uh, done. I mean, okay. that well, it's been approved by the selectmen. It's been approved by the Fincom. you know school committee. Oh, Fincom okay. hasn't got it yet. Um, right now, the the police, the police and the firemen uh, chiefs they they submitted their budget and their request for this budget, mm -hmm. and it was postponed until the next meeting because they couldn't agree on how many officers. You know, like I said, the chief wanted eight and one and. The fire wanted a uh, IT person and a mechanic, and they approved the IT. They approved the mechanic, but I f they didn't approve all of his requests kind of IT person. for, um, you know, firefighters. So that's all coming back before the selectmen the next, um, you know, the next board meeting, and then they will give their recommendation to whether. You know, to to put leave it in the budget or take it out, and then that recommendation, like you said, will go to town meeting. How long do you think town meeting is going to last? Oh, a day, because everybody no, wants no, to be no, a day. No, 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 no. I, I, I mean, in the, in, <laughs> in the longer view, because... Uh, oh, the, the town meeting as town meeting? As an entity, because, you know, it's, uh, it's been interesting to it. me I, to listen to people. It's uh, what? It's been interesting to me to listen to people yep. over the last year or so, and, and, and this comes around every now and then, uh, observing that before we're done with the fall town meeting, they're already preparing for the spring town meeting. Right. So they get a couple of three weeks of breathing time, and then it's 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 headlong into it again. Yep. And how long can we keep that up using this form of government? It's a great when conversation. When some people are saying we should have another regular annual town meeting in the mix here. Well, so, you've been in the town meeting. How do you do that? For, you've been town meeting for how long? <clears throat> Since 1987, uh, with a year and a half off. So, what, what's what's your thought on that? I love town meeting, yep. and I, I hope that there is some way that we can keep it. But when you look at it from a politically technical point of view, I'm not sure that it uh, remains a practical form of government for 70,000 people, 100 square miles of land. And what all we have to do with the time and the money that we have. When you when you when you have that many people and that much money, that many issues, and, and you and that many issues, and you can only talk about them twice a year. The selectmen can you know approve or disapprove things. It still has to go to town meeting, and you can't make any of those decisions 
except twice a year. Um, that, that, that is an inherent problem. Well, that's a problem. And, but, but, but those are spending issues. We're spending money. We're approving zoning. Yep. Uh, we're doing the, the, the legislative things. And we've been able, I, I think, to do well to date. And I really would not like to see town meeting cease to be our form of government. But what I like and don't like uh, hasn't everything to do with reality. Right. And, and, and people are talking to me about a different kind of government that town meeting people is isn't going to be able to keep up with the issues that develop in the future. Right. And they're happening faster and faster. The yep. world is becoming a smaller and smaller yep. technological marble. And I think that's, that was the word that you said that's most important. Faster. It's moving faster. Decisions have to be made faster. And with meeting twice a year, you can't meet that faster. No. I think town meeting has served us, you know, has served well. I've had people talk to me about a different form of government. I, I've heard a mayor. I've heard a city council with, uh, you know, a town manager. Uh, but I think that's basically what you got now with, you know, t town council, selectmen, it's to me almost the same. Yeah, but you could have 15 people yeah. in a town council no, but, you for, know, for, for a precinct. But see, you're, still, you're, but, you know, I think we need a mayor. I think we need someone that, you know, that is, you can. Ken Bukes? Yeah, Kenny Bukes. Ken Bukes for mayor. Because that way there, we know, you know who he is, and if you don't like what, you know, you can get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, don't right. watch his show. I mean, vote you out, Kenny. Not rid of you the other way. That's your hair. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> well, you've just been nominated what, what, for mayor. We're, 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 talking, we're talking about the form of government. If you have any input on this, please call 508 830 Three nine seven one. That's the call in line, so that you can talk to us. Somebody has to have an opinion on that. That's right. Where's Gallerani? Come on, Gal. You know. Oh, he said he's busy tonight. Oh, geez. yeah. Well, he can stay busy, but this brings us back to your first question on controlling spending. Yep. And there are a lot of people out there that believe if we go to a different form of government and have uh, less influence. Uh, in a large town meeting by special interest that we could control the budget, regardless of how liberal Plymouth yep. and the Commonwealth yep. might be. And, 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 and the only problem I have with going to a mayor is that we're going to a form of government that has one person who's making those decisions. Well, you... Who has special interest, who has... People coming at him, so but, no, I get it. You know, yeah. you know, I mean, nothing's perfect. You know, no, I mean, and, and believe me, believe you know, me. But I, we I will. We still have a. We will have a mayor and a town council. Yeah, we will still have a like a town council. Yeah, I don't think we need fifteen. Yeah, you know, but I think you know they meet every week. I mean, you know, and the mayor is there. You know, you know, go knock on his door. Yeah, you know, there's someone you know responsible. There's one person that you can go after and be you know and talk to and yep. and, and question him. And if you don't like him, get rid of him. Right. You know, but when you try to you know you have town meeting 135 members and you know it gets to be too. It's just too much. You know, it really. I, I think it's too. I'm a town meeting member and yep. I'm, and I'm mm. active and uh, I try to be active and uh, you know stay abreast of things and. But still, you know, it's we need someone whose responsibility. So when something comes up, we don't have to wait till April town meeting or you know fall town meeting, and we, you know, it's it's like I I think we should change. And and, yeah. and it, it, it's it's the 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 problem is that you know here's two town meeting members who are questioning town meeting. It but the larger scale of it. Is not questioning it, and and that's. Uh, I, I think the tide is starting to turn, but but I I think that your your problem is that every time the people come and say, hey, we should change this form of government, and they have a charter review, and the charter review comes to town meeting and says, we want to disband you. How do you want to vote on that? And well, they say, no, we don't want to be disbanded. Well, see, that, well, yeah, that's why you should shouldn't even. Ask that town meeting that question. It should go to the voters. Right. Well, that's right. I was you know? I was going to say really the only way to accomplish that is for an initiative referendum. That's right. You go in and right. get 
yeah. five or ten percent, whatever right. is required yep. to yep. put the ballot, uh, the question on the ballot, yeah. and and uh, um, all the people, the people that are out there uh, talking about it behind the scenes yeah. can right. can go vote on it. You know, right. you don't ask town right. meeting to get rid of you know, gee, you want to get rid of your job, right? You know, do you want to stop being you know, would you vote to stop being a town meeting member? You know, a lot of them going to say no. Right, right. That's, well, that's what's happened every time. Yeah, they bring you know. It up. Uh, no. To tell me. You know, so I think I think it should be on the ballot. Yeah, I, I would have to agree because if you bring it to town meeting, um, I'm, never I, I, I would probably say um, keep town meeting. I yep. get such I have such a sense when I leave town meeting that between all those people uh, sitting there and all the process that things have gone through, that um, the right decisions long term are, are somehow getting made. Uh, because I look at the people in Plymouth and I look at the quality of life here. And I, I look at the substance of the downtown in Plymouth in general. And it's just a great place. And you can blame town meeting um, for that. Yep. You know, yep. And I, I don't know. There's a sense of uh, participation and accomplishment uh, that comes with participating in, in town meeting. And, and you're, um, you're one but, of those people but, in town meeting who, who pays attention. And I don't think I've ever seen a town meeting where you haven't got up and talked about something. It's unfortunate, isn't it? No, <laughs> it's not. But, but, but I, think, I think that that, that, you know, that part of town meeting where people like you and Steve get up because you've been paying attention and you, you see an issue, I think that's part of town meeting that, that is valuable. You know what I'd really like to have happen at town meeting? I'd like to go to one town meeting that was a spectator sport for me, where I could just sit there, listen, and, and, and vote. But somehow I find myself drawn into the middle of stuff, and I suppose uh, that's my own fault. It was that sadism I was talking about. The devil made Steve. him do it. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd love to go see, um, I believe Kingston has an open town meeting. Oh, I'd love to see how that works. They do, and it has got to be insane. Oh, I, I, I <coughs> just... What's their population? Do you know? I don't. I don't. I don't. 15, 20, 30,000? Uh, because I was talking to... Uh, um, her name was... I don't know what her married name is. She's Vanessa Vercade uh, in, in Manomet, and she's uh, now a librarian in Kingston, and they had some very important stuff coming up. Um, really uh, good stuff for quality of life and, 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 and such uh, to do with culture um, and environmental protection. And they were looking at what they were going to do to contact their people to pack town meeting yep. and get the stuff to pass. So yep. I think there's something to be said for the transition Plymouth made from at large to representative, yeah. and whether I like it or not, whether town meeting gives me a nice fuzzy feeling, and I love getting that fat FinCom book and going through it, the day has to come oh, yeah. when the numbers cease to function, and oh, yeah. I, I think yeah. that's the practical reality yeah. of it. Yeah. No. You know? well, what do you think of uh, the petitioned article by Stephen Stryer to eliminate the um, Community Preservation Act and its um, income? Of the town. CPC? Yeah. Yeah. They, wow. I, I, <laughs> you, you were not aware there was no. a, a petitioned article. No. I would like Stephen to know. has two of them but on the question. Before I answer your question, I wonder if you could answer me a question. I'll try. Okay. Can I make something up? Uh, yeah, yeah, well. Sure. As long as it's an answer. <laughs> I did. But no. Uh, I was told that if we vote not to be part of CPC, that we will remain in it until everything we have in the pipeline is paid for. And at the end of that, we would stop paying the 1.5% and we would receive no money from the uh, Registry of Deeds. I've also been told that if you opt out you would always pay that one and a half percent forever and still get no money from uh, the Registry of Deeds. So I don't know which one it is. What would Bill Cohane do if they Pardon me? What would Bill Cohane do if there was no CPC? I think he has plenty to do. I have no idea how he does all the things he that does. he does. He does a lot. Um, he's uh, an amazing, uh, incredible 
individual, and uh, people have various opinions of them. So, so what's your, your, your thought them. on the, the whole? The, the, the whole CPA thing? Yeah. Um, well, um, Stephen came to see me, and just for a little background, I've known him for over 40, 40 years. He's my next door neighbor in the summer. And uh, he and his, uh, his, his whole family. And, you know, um, to some extent, I, I, I think that uh, Stephen is being a little bit villainized these days uh, for, for bringing this forward again, because it wasn't many years ago yeah. that town meeting considered this very right. question. And uh, I, I, I signed this petition because I believe that uh, people have every right to raise a question, use the process, ask town meeting, yep. and take it to the voters. But I said, Stephen, if you want this to pass, you got to do an initiative referendum. You're never going to get it through town meeting. Right. That's the nature of yep. uh, our particular legislator, legislature. And what do I think of it? Um, I, I would vote at town meeting to, 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 to send it to a vote. And then I'd go out and fight to keep the Community Preservation Act. Yeah. I, th I think it is very important to the character of the town of Plymouth. I think they've done uh, unbelievable, amazing things. I think they'd be very prudent to get as much open space as they could and avoid buildings and projects. Right. But uh, those become rather difficult. Right. But, but I do they like have this. used that money for buildings and. Well, they have. Right. You know, and I, I think I personally think that we need to get back to what that money's supposed to be used for. Well, there you go. And, I, you know, speaking of uh, Bill Cohen, and it's too bad he's not here to speak for himself, um, what he really objects to, and um, he, he got a little irritated with me not too long ago over Bartlett Hall. Uh, because, you know, we were, they were doing the Jeep raffle and stuff, and everybody's helping and we got to hit the 50 grand or right. else. Um, and uh, I said, well, I said, Bill, the changes to the Community Preservation Act, can't we pull some bucks out of there to make up the difference? I mean, you know, so we got 60 grand. Yeah. They need another $40,000. Right. And uh, he just about lost it. Um, no, the CPA is not the operating budget of the town. If you want to get another $40,000 for Bartlett Hall, then go see the steering committee and get 10 people to sign a petition right. and, and uh, go raise and appropriate right. because this money is for some very specific purposes. So, you know, I, I, I think that it's used as appropriately as it can be, but everybody's after it. Yeah. You know, everybody I, I, I wants think CPA we bought a lot of money. buildings that I... I Stretch to see how that's open space. It's considered yeah. historical preservation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my problem with open space is uh, we have an awful lot of open space here in Plymouth. An awful lot. And we've got some beautiful open space as far as Ellisville Harbor and, um, you know, Center Hill Preserve. Yep. And, you know, but we're buying up all this land. None of it is handicap accessible. So when somebody wants to go to Ellisville Harbor or Santa Hill Preserve, that's <laughs> handicap. They're going to get out of their car, get into their wheelchair. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say go to the parking lot at Ellisville because it's all potholes. You'll never get out of it, your wheelchair. But it's, they get, back in the, get out of the wheelchair, get back in the car, and go. Where we can, where it's been, I think it's been approved the last... Uh, time the legislature says you could use this money to make it handicap accessible. Put boardwalks in or pack trails or something that could be used, but we have nothing for these yeah. handicapped people to use. And I think that's... We, we do have something. Where? Um, Bill showed me a picture, and maybe it was the access to Whitehorse Be White Beach or Long Beach. They have these mats um, that they can roll out, and and then you can you can get over those with a wheelchair, you know, so that you have an ability to get to, to beaches and 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 water. And but that's one. That's take, only one. Take those to any particular site. Well, Fresh Pond is handicapped accessible. 
Well, well, it's, you know. So. But still, we have so much, and we're <coughs> buying so much. Well, yeah. A lot know. of the trails you'd have a tough time with, unless maybe you took a hoverboard. What yeah, trail? There you go. Yeah, get a there hoverboard. You, you know. Yeah. And it's, I just think we, you know, um, I think we need more to do for our handicapped people. I, I, I really do. I, I feel strongly about that, and I think a couple of places is just not enough. Yeah. Do you, you buy know. the argument that? Uh, Taking these uh, hundreds or thousands of acres of open space um, off the market um, diminishes the tax burden to the town of Plymouth? To a point. To a point, you buy it. I buy it, but then on the other hand, is it I preserves I, Plymouth. I don't know about you, and I, I know when I came down here, one of the reasons why I came here was because houses were reasonable, and we had a lot mm. of people move into the town of Plymouth. Oh yeah. Okay. And Including me. Okay. And you let me stay. Me. Well, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> no, so yeah, that's that so far. <laughs> Thank you, Rassling. I appreciate that. But, you know, it seems like, you know, that was the American dream, to come in and be able to buy a home. And uh, I was talking to somebody up by Manchester by the Sea, and they're telling me now that, oh, yeah, our kids, our kids will never live here because they can't afford it. <laughs> you know, they can't afford to live here. And I was looking in the paper, and they had some condos starting at $1.6 million. Yeah. And I don't want Plymouth to turn into that. Oh, you look at you look at Warren <coughs> Avenue. Last summer, there were sixteen yep. houses for sale. You know, I don't because want, they couldn't afford it. I don't want Plymouth to turn into be an exclusive a community yeah. where, you know, and I'm afraid that's going to happen. And well, it, yeah, it does add to the schools. You know, it does. But you know, I, I think we should have be, allow uh, allow more. We shouldn't be taking up all this land. For one, two, I think some of this land could probably be rezoned before it's put into conservation and uh, for commercial, so we could expand our commercial base. Uh, we do need to do that. You know, there's we just bought some land down on Bourne Road, and uh, it's close to where the slip ramp was going to be put in. Mm -hmm. That would be a great place for change to commercial. It's right next to the thousand acres, which nothing's ever going to get yeah. done because. You know they can't. The town can't afford to clear the titles. Right. So I, you know, I mean, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think they, it could be done better. I. Yeah. You speaking know. of speaking of buildings, what about the Symes House, Randy? What about the Symes House, wrestling? No, I've uh, I've been out of that loop for a while. Yeah. Um, we had hit a point going from. Uh, the summer of 2015 uh, into this year, where absolutely nothing was happening. Yep. Um, we it was a log jam, and the community preservation uh, committee uh, took note and uh, asked that it be returned to the town and have some issues professionally resolved. And that's in the process of uh, happening. Yeah. Uh, there's something going on in the social media this morning that uh, um, I was told about that I don't understand that the town manager had uh, uh, mentioned a recommendation of the uh, project manager, Ted Gentry, uh, to reduce the square footage, to take um, into consideration the $900,000 reduction that yours truly <laughs> made at uh, town meeting. So we went from 3.4 million to uh, 2.5 million. And uh, Where'd you get that number? <clears throat> I split the difference, yep. dude. Some guy came in and, and, and said he wanted to make it a million and a half, and town meeting wasn't going for 3.4. Um, and it all took me by complete surprise. I had no idea what was going on. Janet Young gets up, wants to reconsider. Uh, people start talking, and uh, it was obvious to me if we didn't strike a compromise, uh, the Symes House was going um, no place, and it needs to go someplace, one way or the other. Um, so I offered the two and a half million down the middle, and uh, it was enough. Um, so now we're kind of uh, um, stuck. Is that, is that enough uh, to? In my finish opinion, it? finish it. Yes, a million and a half, and another two and a half million is four million dollars. Yep. If we can't 
do that house and do it properly with a non-residential cooking kitchen to generate a hell of a lot of revenue, then we have a problem. That's a lot of money. I, I and, agree. And I agree. I appreciate and, and it so much that Manomet has the opportunity to take an entirely unique structure in an entirely unique location and make something of it as a hub for the Manomet Village community. So it really needs to be made to work. I mean, there was an operating budget done quite some time ago um, on the income from the business offices and the affordable housing. Uh, it didn't really include events. Uh, and it didn't really include uh, what we learned uh, at, at one point from the health department and then for, from two or three caterers that came in to talk to the directors at, at the time that uh, a, a certified non-residential, not a commercial kitchen, not a restaurant kitchen, but a, a non-residential kitchen that you can cook in, that you can, you know, cook with gas. Um, and, and, and it has to be certified, it has to be maintained, it's got to be clean, it's got rules, it's got regulations, but it's worth you know, $45 to $75 an hour for people that want to bake cakes, cookies, um, hors d'oeuvres, for, for people that, that, that go to uh, farmers markets and stuff. No. They've got to have a certified kitchen to cook in. Okay, and, so that, and, that's how and, you're making money. And that, that's one way to make money. We, we were told it was uh, a gold mine, um, non-intrusive. Who would be using that? Um, professional cooks, uh, people that make goods for farmers markets and bake sales and stuff. And um, there's a need for that. There's a need for that, yeah. According to the health department, there's a very large need for that. Huh. Um, there's a lot of de the demand for it. So, you know, it, it, it hurts to see an article on social media that, that, that says the square footage of the building is going to be reduced and the back, uh, the back shed roof first floor knocked off and the stairwell and the elevator pulled into the building as it stands with that first floor shed roof off <coughs> and then push the kitchen, reduce the kitchen size. Right. Um, you know, towards the dining room. That is the problem with social media, though, that everybody has access to it, so someone can say well, this any was, outrageous problem. No, this was the man I met current. Oh. Uh, reporting on what I had thought the town manager said to the selectmen last night. And now it's uh, made its way over into uh, an article by Frank Mand on the Wicked Local site. I can't say that I've sat down and read both. I've been yeah. working all day. You know, but this stuff filters into my uh, yeah. into my life. So I, I just I don't want to bore people or get too carried away on that particular well, topic. Well, I but, went I know. went to the selectmen's meeting last night, and I didn't hear any announcement from or any report from the town manager on this. I mm -hmm. did see it in local. Uh, I all things Plymouth on the on the web. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that social media site, and also. Um, it's it stated the the Plymouth Current was reporting this, and I did read the article, but and it did say, as Randy said, that they wanted to re, uh, uh, make the kitchen smaller and to put the elevator on the inside of the building, cutting down the the actual uh, floor space. So that's, but I haven't heard anything official, and I don't know if that's official or not. Um, I guess phone call, you know, phone yeah. call tomorrow to town hall. I'll find out. I think it's a premature decision, but what bothers me the very most is the historical aspect of, of, of what that does to the house. Um, there's this pantry between the existing kitchen and the dining room, and there's this beautiful cabinet still built into the corner, and that pantry works so well with the kitchen, kitchen presently designed as a serving station and a pass-through for servers working between the kitchen and the dining area. You can put on your silverware, put on your napkins, process your, your plates, your drinks, uh, whatever. But that pantry is intact. It's the same pantry they were using in 1870. It tells a story. And there are servant stairs uh, that go up to the third floor that were getting 
saved, that and the pantry. And uh, the servants stairs go up them, and you'll see the story they, they tell because it's about a nine inch riser and a six inch tread. Um, and I just was hoping we could draw our lines of rehabilitation um, and complete reconstruction in that building behind the stairs and behind the pantry and keep those historical features. I don't want to lose the historical value of that building. The exterior is great, yeah. and I'd like the interior to, to, to preserve that also. So whose decision is that? Is that well, right, no, right now I, I, I think that uh, that decision is going to land in the lap of the Plymouth Building Committee, as, as I understand it. They have a small working group right now uh, resolving how to, 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 to deal with the $900,000 $900, reduction. And I have a memorandum here. They're having a, well, how does it start? Let me just tell you how it starts. Um, <laughs> on your question to the maker of the motion, just where, one, where would one cut $900,000? And then I go through it and, and, and talk about it. And I came up with 700000 you know, so uh, we're getting close. Uh, but there are some questions within that that have to be considered. Nothing is straightforward. Nothing is simple. And it was a question um, about the landscaping, too, I read. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah. yeah. $500,000 for landscaping. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's nuts. The guy that the, the estimators did a great job coming up with the 3.4 so far as what they relied upon. It's a ton of money, but they were given a landscape plan. Um, with a ton of sidewalks, with a ton of plantings, um, with stone retaining walls, with an outbuilding that's a bandstand in the estimate, framed and ready to go as a performing center. All we need is to finish the house and we can deal with the grass, we can have tents, we can have weddings. There's nothing wrong with the trees. Take down the ones that aren't functioning. And let's get going, you know? Well, it goes back to what we said to talk about, about the budget. Is, is when you sit there and you're talking about $3.4 million for a project, you got to start asking, do we really need the bandstand? Do we really need we don't. the outbuilding? You do know, we really need all it, this stuff to finish a darn building Brewster, that it, hopefully it, is going to make us money? It blew me away when I first looked at that. And, and I said, look, guys, this could go, this could go, this could go. This, this is, you know, we can do things with this. And uh, the CPC says, now, wait a minute. This was done by a professional estimator based on this landscape plan, on these architecturals dated in July 2014, um, and on uh, various policy or construction issues that had, had been decided. Look at it in that light. And I did. And the estimator did a great job, very competent. However, it's not really how and where we're trying to go. You know, if the, I, I would say, I would make this comparison. When you drive in to Plymouth North High School and you look at the granite curbing, um, the whole works, the place is yep. built for a public function. Yep. And that's the type of estimate that was applied to the Symes House. Right. We don't need to be that fancy. I'd love to Man have it. For crying out loud. Well, that's right. We're over the hill. <laughs> you know, anyway, there is no redemption. Right. Yeah, you're uh, the part of town nobody wanted. Remember for years? <laughs> yeah. At, at, at any rate, we don't have much time left. But I just want to bring up one more thing um, with Stephen Stryer's uh, articles. Uh, I, p people really need to understand that he has a philosophy that government should be as small as it can be. He's a libertarian. Its job is to provide roads, education, fire, police, safety, um, the basics. After that, we ought to be taking care of ourselves and this business of buying open land and taking it off the tax rolls um, is for the birds. That's how Stephen looks at it. He's entitled to that opinion. Yep. You know, he's a great friend. And I get his point of view and his perspective. I don't agree with it, but I get it. And he has a companion article to just getting rid of the CPA and the percent and a half. The companion article is to have a two-thirds vote required to pass any CPA article. 
Wow. Which I think is a very interesting, an very interesting good. idea that we all need to think about. I just want to throw that in. Yep. And, uh, hey, let's talk, and, about, and, let's talk about the 1620 building finally coming down and talk about Ernie's. Uh, 1620, uh, last I heard was two years ago, he wanted to put in a uh, condos, retail, and underground parking. Uh, I guess he had problems with underground parking because it's all it's water. <laughs> it's water. water, water no, imagine that. <laughs> Just like they found it in Bubbling the water. Out of the ground. water huh? <laughs> you know, so uh, I was surprised. That's the last I heard. That was almost two years ago. So I guess uh, last I heard it was a, I thought it was a conceptual plan. I didn't know it was finalized, but I guess it is because the building's gone. gone. Yeah, it's and gone. now what? Amazing. I don't know. Maybe uh, it'll sit Condos, there for a yeah. while. Who knows? Condos uh, is the last I heard. What? Condos is Condos. what I heard last. Condos are retail. Oh, well, yeah. we should ask Michael Vogel what he's going to do with it. Yeah. I'm sure he'd be. We should bring him on the show. Hey, Mike, give us a call. Mike, Mike, give us a call. (laughs) Vogel can come in. (laughs) I love the 1620. Man, that place was great in its prime. It was. When it was good. Yeah. Yeah. We had had our wedding reception there. Oh, really? Yeah. They had the best Pac-Man machine in the world. (laughs) (laughs) You were playing? I'll tell you, the best place was the old Indian River Inn in Manama. Absolutely. That place was the best. It was the best. Yeah. You know, it's gone now. but it's And the White Sands was fun. Yeah. I had my own couch there. I bet you did. <laughs> yeah, I did. What about Ernie's? What are we hearing about Ernie's? Nothing yet. I rumor that's CBS, but yeah. I don't know. I haven't really heard. I don't think they've really no, come I think out and said it. No, I think it's at least a year in the Yeah, the I guess, yeah. It takes a while, I guess, to make sure that they get the permits and right, right. everything else. Well, I think it's a year before Ernie's goes He wants to go. See, he wants to go smaller. Yeah, it's better. You know, which... You know, I mean, he's been there for years. He's worked hard. Maybe he needs a break. And, you know, I hate yeah. to see it go because it's a good place. Right. Well, you Tuesday know, night, but, everybody was there. Yeah, I mean, Ernie's, the food's good. Prices are right. Food's yeah. good. The help, the help's great. Yeah. You know, the yeah. service is good. And, you know, you hate to see local places go. We no, get you 1620, too. I say the Indian River, you say Ernie's. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. There's Old places a, like that. I, I, yeah. I, I mourn for the, the colonial. Yeah. Oh God! Yeah, yes, was, you know. Oh, the pork cutlets. Yeah. And Jeffrey's up in <sighs> up in exit two in Cedarville. Yeah, those those yeah. were the good old days. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Every Wednesday, all the shrimp you can eat for five bucks or really? something like that. Wow. Yeah. You know, they had they had uh, scampi, they had fried, and they had oh yeah, it was, it was great. I know the you old know, places. You know, that, local places, local people. It. Yeah. Yeah, they were great. You know, it's. I guess we're showing our age. Oh, well, thank you for showing up. And uh, Karen, we'll see you in seven with John Mahoney. We'd like to thank uh, Ken for being in the booth tonight. And uh, if you see Ken or Karen around town, say hi and uh, tell them how much you like the show. And uh, I'd like to thank Anna Rose, too, for helping. Yes. She's great. Yes. You know, thank her very much. And uh, yeah, see you in seven. See you in seven. Well, you'll see Karen <laughs> in seven. <laughs> Will we see?